Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ipshita. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we shall be talking about biosimilars. So what are they? They are legally approved subsequent versions of innovative biopharmaceutical products made by a different sponsor following patent and exclusivity expiry of the innovative product. So first we have an innovative product and when the patent and expiry, when the patent and exclusivity of this product expires, a different sponsor makes a subsequent version of this product which is the biosimilar. So because of structural and manufacturing complexities, these biologic products are considered as similar but not generic equivalents of the innovative biopharmaceutical. Biosimilars should prove comparable pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, immunogenicity, safety and efficacy to innovative biologic to establish biosimilarity. These molecules are named differently in different countries such as follow-on biologicals, similar biologics, similar biotherapeutic product or subsequent entry biologics. So the WHO uses the term similar biologic product and defines it as similar to an already licensed reference biotherapeutic product in terms of quality, safety and efficacy. Follow-on biologic is the term used by US FDA and defined as highly similar to the reference product without clinically meaningful difference again in safety, purity and potency. Canada uses the term subsequent entry biologic and is defined as drugs that enter the market subsequent to a version previously authorized in Canada with demonstrated similarity to, similarity to a reference biologic drug. Based on these different definitions, there are three determinants in definition of biosimilar products. It should be a biologic product. The reference product should be an already licensed biologic product. The demonstration of high similarity in safety, quality and efficacy is necessary. Similarity should be demonstrated using a set of comprehensive comparability exercises at the quality, non-clinical and clinical levels. There's another term bio better. So the first product is the innovative molecule. These are clinically validated target and therapy. Next, there is biosimilar, what we have been talking about so far. There's no innovation from the marketed product, just that it is a new product made subsequently after the expiry of the patent of the innovative molecule. Whereas next is bio superior or bio better. There is an innovation in the context of original therapy and interface. A new lead, different epitope, effector function, drug conjugate, size of molecule, something new has been happening. And there's a better protein engineering. And next there is the novel, which is the target or modality without validation. Okay. So bio betters, also called as me betters, these are highly differentiated and potent bio superiors based on an existing approved biologic delivered out of better scientific research and antibody technology to create an enhanced therapeutically beneficial mechanism of action. So there's potential improvement, increased bioavailability, longer half-life, better safety and immunogenicity, better and broader efficacy. The scope of them is to treat refractory or relapsed patients or those with inconvenient dosing system or safety concerns. Biosimilars become popular because of their cost effectiveness. Here we can see that the original molecule Lantus is almost 2500 rupees, whereas the biosimilar is about a thousand rupees cheaper. Difference between chemical generics and biosimilars. So chem biosimilars are heavier. So unlike structurally well-defined low molecular weight chemical drugs, biopharmaceuticals are high molecular weight compounds with complex three-dimensional structure like we can see aspirin weighs 140, 180 dalton whereas interferon beta is 19,000 dalton. They are larger. So typically biologic drug is 100 to 1000 times larger than small molecule chemical drugs. They possess fragile three-dimensional structure as compared to well characterized one-dimensional structure of the chemical drug. Difficult to define structure. So small molecular drugs, it's easy to reproduce and specify by mass spectroscopy and other techniques. Whereas the lack of appropriate investigative tools to define composite structure of the large proteins of biosimilars. There's a complex manufacturing process. So manufacturers of biosimilar products will not have access to the manufacturing process of the innovative products. That is the proprietary knowledge is not available. 
so it is impossible to accurately duplicate any protein product. Different manufacturing processes use different cell lines, protein sources, and extraction and purification techniques, leading to the heterogeneity of biopharmaceuticals. Versatile cell lines used to produce the proteins have an impact on the gross structure of the protein. Such alterations may significantly impact the receptor binding, stability, pharmacokinetics, and safety. Immunogenic potentials of therapeutic proteins result in the unique safety issue which is not observed with chemical generics. The emerging role of biosimilars, countries around the world growing aging population increase in chronic disease. Expanding demand, so there's expanding demand for good quality healthcare and that's a challenge of controlling the healthcare expenditure. The safe and regulated introduction of biosimilars into the market has been forecasted to increase access to much needed biologic medicines and reduce the costs. Concerns with biosimilars, the two biosimilar products of different origin, the two biosimilars may have same therapeutic effect, they may have different side effect on toxicology. Hence biosimilars require a thorough testing. Similarity between a biosimilar and its reference biotherapeutic product should be evaluated in all respects of quality, safety and efficacy. Purported copies of biotherapeutic medicine that have not undergone head-to-head -head comparisons with an appropriate reference product put patient safety at risk and should not be licensed via biosimilar pathway. So what are the issues of concern with user biosimilars? First is efficacy issue. There's a difference between the bioactivity of the biosimilar and the innovative product. Like 11 epoitin alpha products from four different countries, there's significant diversions from specification for the in vivo bioactivity which ranged from 71 to 226 percent. Five of the products failed to fulfill their own specification. So monoclonal antibody therapy for treating a transplant rejection or can cancer patient in such cases we cannot really accept variability. Second is safety issues that is concerns regarding immunogenicity. For example increase in number of cases of pure red cell aplasia associated with specific formulation of eptoin alpha caused by the production of neutralizing antibody against endogenous epoitin. Third is pharmacovigilance. Due to limited clinical database at the time of approval, vigorous pharmacovigilance is required. Immunogenicity is a unique safety issue. Adverse drug reactions monitoring data should be exhaustive. Type of adverse effect and data about drugs such as proprietary name, international non-proprietary name and dosage should be noted. Substitution. Dispensing of biosimilars in place of prescribed generic drug is a major problem. Rationale for generics, original drugs and the generics are identical and have the same therapeutic effect. However, biosimilars have cost saving benefit. So, same substitution rules should not be applied because it decreases the safety of therapy or can cause therapeutic failure. Secondly, uncontrolled su substitution confounds accurate pharmacovigilance. And thirdly, adverse effect emerges after switching from generic to biosimilar without documentation. In that case, the event will not be associated to a specific product or in fact, it will be ascribed to a wrong product. The naming and labeling. So generic adaptation of chemical medicine is assigned the same name, that is identical copies of the reference product. Biosimilars require unique names and this would facilitate prescribing and dispensing of biopharmaceuticals, precise pharmacovigilance. Need for comprehensive labeling of biosimilars include deviations from generic medication and unique safety and efficacy data. Assist the physician and pharmacist in making informed decisions. So status of regulation for biosimilars globally. So the WHO had said the approach established for generic medications, medicines is not suitable for development, evaluation and licensing of similar biotherapeutic products since biotherapeutics consist of relatively large and complex proteins that are difficult to characterize. So there's a strong need for regulations governing biosimilars. Implementation of an abbreviated licensure pathway for biologic products presents challenges given the associated scientific and technical complexities. So the WHO guidelines were set in a meeting in Geneva in 2007 and they were published guidelines for bi biological products in October 2009. Regulatory framework in India 
consist of the drug and cosmetic acts 1940 the drug cosmetic rule cosmetics rule 1945 all these work under the central drug standard control organization that is cdsco the also the other authorities in uh, for approval are review committee of genetic manipulation and the genetic engineering approval committee so what is biosimilarity biosimilarity is the regulatory term used to denote the comparability between a biosimilar and its reference medicinal product regulatory bodies across the world including india recommends a stepwise approach to demonstrate biosimilarity between a proposed medicine and the original biologic the aim is to demonstrate no clinically meaningful difference in terms of safety potency and purity principles for development of similar biologics developed through sequential process to demonstrate the similarity by extensive characterization studies revealing molecular and quality attributes with regard to the reference biologic ensure that the product meets acceptable levels of safety efficacy and quality to ensure public health in case reference biologics used for more than one indication efficacy and safety of similar biologic has to be justified or if necessary demonstrated separately for each of the claimed indications justification will depend on the clinical experience available literature data and whether or not the same mechanism of action is involved in specific indication so first step is a selection of the reference biologic it has to be authorized using the complete dossier rationale for the choice of reference biologic should be provided by the manufacturer in the submissions used in all the comparability exercises with respect to quality preclinical and clinical consideration following factors should be considered for selection of reference biologic it should be a licensed in india and should be innovative product license based on full safety efficacy and quality data another biosimilar cannot be considered as reference biologic in case the reference biologic is not marketed in india it should it must be licensed and marketed for 4 years post approval in innovator jurisdiction which should be a country with well established regulatory framework period of 4 years may be reduced or waived if no medicine or palliative therapy is available in case of national health care emergency the active substance dosage form strength and route of administration of the similar biologics should be same as that of the reference biologic so who regulation shows the reference product the reference d- defines the reference product the reference product should be authorized in the country or region in question quality all aspects of quality and heterogeneity should be assessed including head to head comparisons with the reference product non clinical data should include pharmacodynamic pharmacokinetic and comparative repeat dose toxicity studies in a relevant species clinical studies required to demonstrate similar safety and efficacy immunogenicity should always be investigated in humans before authorization pharmacovigilance and risk management a pharmacovigilance plan is required when an application is submitted and a risk management plan may be necessary in some cases here post market data for similar biologics is very important the risk management plan should consist of the following a pharmacovigilance plan Clinical studies done on similar biologics prior to market authorization are limited in nature. Therefore, rare adverse effects are unlikely to be encountered. Comprehensive pharmacovigilance plan should be prepared by the manufacturer. Periodic safety update reports submitted every six months for the first two years after the approval. For subsequent two years, the periodic safety update reports to be submitted annually to the TCGI office. adverse drug reaction reporting all serious and expected adverse reactions must be reported to the licensing authority within 15 days of initial receipt of information by the applicant post marketing studies plan of post marketing study should be captured in pharmacovigilance plan and update on the study should be submitted to the cidesco at least one non comparative post marketing clinical study with focus on safety and immunogenicity should be performed If immunogenicity is evaluated in clinical study it is not mandatory to carry out additional non comparative immunogenicity studies in the post marketing studies assay method should be validated and be able to characterize antibody content and typing that is neutralizing cross reactivity of antibodies formed neutralizing antibodies their impact on the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic parameters safety and efficacy must be assessed
Archiving of the data, applicant should archive all the data for a period of at least five years after marketing approval, site and material of archiving should be indicated. In conclusion, biotechnological medicines shall become an important part of future healthcare landscape. With patent expiration of innovative products, biosimilars will increasingly become available. Awareness of the deviations between biosimilars and innovative products in terms of efficacy, safety and immunogenicity is essential for proper prescription and safety of the patient. So few potential biosimilars on the horizon in the field of ophthalmology. The first one uh, we should talk about is Razumab by Intas Pharmaceuticals, which is already approved. So Razumab uh, became the first and the only similar biologic to Ranibizumab being clinically used at this point in time. It was approved by the regulatory body from India in 2015. It is a recombinant humanized IgG1 monoclonal antibody fragment designed for intraocular use. Comes in a single-use glass vial like the reference product with a concentration of 10 mg per ml in a 0.05 ml. The drug has proved its safety and efficacy since its approval. Razumab is approved for all the indicator, indications in which ranibizumab is used like wet AMD, DME, or view and myopic choroidal neovascularization. Here are a few examples of biosimilars to aflibercept and then to avastin or bevacizumab and adalimumab. That's all we need to know about biosimilars. I hope this was helpful. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you have anything to say, write it in the comment section and share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Thank you.